Sometimes in computer programming, we want the computer to behave in a sort of random or unpredictable way. Um, this is especially true for gaming and simulations, um, because it doesn't make sense sometimes uh, for the computer to always behave in just a procedural way. Um, that is like, if you're playing a poker game, for instance, and you want to shuffle the deck of cards, uh, you want the cards to come out different every single time. You don't want the cards uh, to be shuffled the same way with the same results every time, because otherwise everything would be predictable and the game would be boring. Similarly, if you're playing a game where you're, um, let's say, searching for something, if the item is always in the same spot, then it's going to be really boring, maybe uh, after the second time you play. So, it, a lot of times it's really good to get some randomness involved. Um, the problem with the computer, though, is that the computer generally uh, cannot create random numbers. And the reason why is because the computer is just a machine, and it's, it's actually deterministic. It's, it can only behave in the way that it's made to behave, and so it's not actually capable of generating a random number. Okay. That being said, uh, what we have with computer programming is something called a pseudo-random number generator. Okay, so pseudo random number generator. Okay, I'm just going to put gen. Now, pseudo means fake or not really. So, it's not really a random number generator. So, what is it? Well, what it is, is a, an equation that uh, when you put in a series of numbers into it, it will create a uniform distribution of numbers. Okay, so what will happen is that you get some equation and when you put a series of numbers in it, um, if I graph the numbers here, okay, let's say 1 and 2 infinity, and or whatever limit, and this would be the frequency of occurrence, okay, what I will get is something like this. Okay, so a, f a fairly uniform distribution, which means that the chance of getting any number from this uh, equation is the same as getting any other number, which means that it looks like it's random although it's not random. Now, basically what the computer does is it says that the random number, and I'll just call it actually Rn, just to be short, um, is equal to the result of some function, okay, of some function of x. And then what it does is, well, I'll just call this Rn1, so the first random number. Now the second random number is basically the same function, but instead of using an x value, it uses random number 1, okay? And then random number 3, okay, is the same thing, but it uses random number 2. And th this function, and I'm not going to write down the function mainly because I really don't want to look it up, but also because it doesn't really matter. Um, this function will produce that uniform distribution if you use it in this way. Now the problem with this is that um, in order for this to start, okay, you have to have some x value. Okay, so there has to be an x value to start, otherwise, um, otherwise you can't get this first random number, and then if you can't get the first random number, then you can't get the second random number, and then you can't get the third, and so on and so forth. This x value is known as the seed. Okay, and the reason why it's called a seed is that you're planting a value into the equation. Okay, so it's called a seed. Now, the problem with this is that if I put a 5 in, for instance, like just a constant as a seed, then I will get a certain random number out of it because, or a certain result of it, because it's just an equation. And every time you put that 5 in there, you'll get the same number out of the equation. And that means that if you put the, that number that you got into the second equation, then you're going to get the same th second number, and then you put the second number into the third equation, you get the same third number. And so what it means is that you will get actually the same number pattern every single time if you use the same seed. So the problem with that is what that means is that you have to have a random seed um, in order to get a random series of numbers. But in order to get a random seed, you would need a random number generator. And of course, to get a random number generator, you would need a random seed, and so on and so forth. So what computer scientists have done is they've come up with a clever way of coming up with a random seed. And what that way is, is they use the clock. 
okay, or in C++, it's the time. Okay. Now, the time in computers is is actually a number, and it's represented by, uh, as the number of seconds. Okay, so I'm going to write this down here because it's important. Time is equal to the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970, at 12 a.m. Okay, and so what that means is that um, because you're using the time and you run your computer at a different time um, every time you use it, um, then you're going to put in a different number. That number is very difficult to predict, and so it will you always get what appears to be a random number from this or a random series of numbers. Now, as uh, computers have gotten more complicated, and also with the birth of the internet, um, there's different ways of getting a random seed rather instead of using the clock. Uh, for instance, um, there's a way of um, getting going on the internet and finding um, like some atmospheric pressure from a sensor that might vary, and they use that atmospheric pressure, or um, measuring the cosmic background radiation level or something like that. And then what they'll do is they'll use that measurement to generate the seed, and because those things are just part of nature, they're inherently random and they can't be predicted, and then you can get a random series from this. But in programming, uh, for now, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to use the clock. Okay. All right, so let's go over to the code here. And we see we have our old code from before. Uh, if you haven't seen the previous videos, you might want to briefly review them. Okay, and instead of assigning the number this time, okay, what I'm going to do is I am going to just make it random. Okay, now, now what I'm going to do first, though, is I'm going to show you how the clock works. Okay, so um, in order to get the time, we're going to use a value called time zero, okay, a command called time zero. And what that does is it basically retrieves the time. Now, in this program, as I've written it, it the computer would retrieve the time, but it wouldn't do anything with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say C out um, the time is okay, time zero. Okay, and I'll follow that with an end line. Okay. And what will happen is that comment this out for now. Okay, is the computer will tell us what time it is. And let's take a look. Okay, and so what it says is that the time is 1.3 billion seconds. Right? So what that means though is if you were born on January 1st, 1970 at 12 a.m., this is how many seconds old you would be. Okay. So that's how the time works. Now, the way the random number generator works is that first we have to enter a seed. Now, this, keep in mind, this is just specific to C++. Uh, in some languages you do have to do this, in some languages you don't. In Java, for instance, you don't, you don't have to seed the random number generator. But in C++ you do. Okay, so in C++ the, um, the command to seed the random number generator, generator is SRAND. And it basically stands for seed random number generator. Okay, and then what we have to do is we have to put whatever value you we want to seed it in in the uh, parentheses here. So what I'm going to do is say time zero. Okay, now this isn't going to work right away, and we'll take a look and see what happens here. Okay, oh, I guess it did work right away. Okay. Um, okay, I wasn't expecting it to, but uh, the reason why is often because you often need to include a preprocessor definition here. And what that is, is you have to usually hash include time.h for this. Okay, well anyways, um, if it works then great, if not, um, it could be that this compiler is set to automatically include the time.h and maybe I just missed it, but anyways, let's continue on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the number is equal to a random number. So I'm going to say rand. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is uncomment this out, and I will be able to print out the random number here. Okay, now here it says that the random number is 15,583. Okay, and we'll run it again and see what happens. 
Okay, and this one is 15,619. Now what you'll find is that because the time is ascending, the random number will also be ascending. Okay, so it appears to be random, but as I said, it's not random. All right, now the problem with this is that the, this number is not really useful to us. Uh, a common strategy, for instance, is if you want the computer to make, say, uh, four one of four decisions, you would generate a number between one and four, and you would associate each one of those numbers with a decision. So you'd say, you know, if the computer, uh, let's say they were playing rock, paper, scissors, uh, you'd make it choose a number from one to three. If they chose one, it would be rock. If it's two, then the computer chose paper, and if three, the computer chose scissors. You could also make it more complicated by, for instance, choosing a number from one to a hundred, and you could say, um, if it was 1 to 60, then it was rock, and say uh, 61 to 90 it was paper, and 91 to 100 is scissors. And what that would give is a 60% chance of rock, a 30% chance of paper, and a 20% or 10% chance of scissors. Um, but the problem is that even then, we're just generating a number between 1 and 100. We're not generating a number uh, in the you know the tens of thousands or whatever. Uh, so. The, the issue is that this number is not really useful. Um, but the way we counter that is by using the modulus operator. Now, in my previous video, I talked about how the modulus operator uh, al basically allows us to change a number. Now, when you modulus one number by, let's say, seven, the highest number that you can get is six, and the lowest number you can get is zero. And we're gonna take advantage of this. Okay, so, so what we do is we're going to say, well, um, if I had some maximum and minimum, so let's say minimum is equal to um, zero, and int max is equal to let's say um, yeah, let's say eight, and I'm just going to push this stuff down a little bit, put this nicer on the screen. Okay, so here I have. Um, random here, and what I want to do is I want to take modulus max. Okay, so if I say modulus max, the highest number I could get would be um, 7, and the lowest number I'd get was 0. So I don't really quite have the range there. Now, the obvious solution then is not to do modulus max, is to do modulus max plus 1. Okay, so if I want a number between 1 and 8, or 0 and 8, what I do is I say modulus 9, because that uh, that would give me a number between 0 and 8. And if you don't get that, then please watch my modulus video again. Okay, let's take a look here. Okay, so we're going to compile it here, and it says this number returned 5. Okay, and we'll test it one more time, and it returns 1. Okay, and that means that um, well, it's not a definitive proof of it. I would, in order to do that, I would test it like at least like 10 or 20 times. But what we're getting is a number between 1 and 9, or 0 and 9. Now, the problem is that what if I don't want um, a number between 0 and 9, or 0 and 8, sorry. What if I want a number from 1 to 8? Okay. Well, that's pretty easy, too. Now, what I can do is I can recognize that the difference between 8 and 1 is 7. So I'm not actually trying to find um, 8 different values. Right? I'm trying to find like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm actually just trying to find uh, 7 different values. Okay, so what I would do is I'd say I'm actually trying to find max minus min values. Okay, and then what I, whatever I'm going to get, okay, so if I say max minus min plus 1, that's max is 8, minus min is uh, 7 plus 1 is 8 again. And that will give me a number between 0 and 7. Now, I don't want a number between 0 and 7. I want a number between 1 and 8. Um, but what you should notice is that the range, I mean, and that means the difference between 7 and 0 and 8 and 1 is the same. So what I can do is I can just add 1 back. Okay, so I can add the minimum back to it. Okay, and this creates uh, the general equation for generating random numbers. Okay, so I've got max minus min plus one plus min. Okay, and we'll take a look and see how that works. Okay, so one to eight. Okay, and uh, I'm going to throw in some code here, although I'm not going to explain it. Um, 
I'll explain it in a future video here. And just basically what this code will do is it'll allow me to print this 10 times. So it executes this 10 times. Okay, just because I don't want to run this 10 different times. Okay, and so here you got three three seven three five 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 or five five three two four six, and I wanted numbers between one and eight. Now it could be that I just never got a one or an eight, but let's try it again and see what happens. Okay, and here I got eight one two eight seven, and so yes, it does actually produce numbers between one and eight. Okay, um, and so that's really great. So we have the general equation of the random number generator. Um, as I said, this is a really, really um, important thing to do, especially if you're doing any game development or if you plan on doing any simulations or things like that. Um, I'll explain this uh, one more time here, um, just in using paint here. Okay, so if I had a number line, okay, um, and what I could say is that the distance between, let's say this is zero, and we'll say 5, we'll say 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on. Okay, so this would be 0, 5, 10, 15, and 20. Okay, if I was going to generate a number uh, between, um, let's say, 1 to 6, or let's say uh, 6 to 16. Okay, so that means I want to go, I want to draw a line that basically starts around here and goes to about there. Okay, well what I can say is that, you know what, this is essentially the same as generating a number line that goes from, well if it's 6 to 16, okay, and I'll just write this here, so this is 6, this is 16. The length of this line is 10. So it's essentially the same as generating a number between 0 and 10. And we can do that by saying module is 11. Okay? And that's how we get the max plus 1. Right? Uh, the max minus min plus 1 by finding the length of this line. And then the final plus min is doing what's called a horizontal translation. So I'm saying, you know what, like, if I get a 0, that's the same as just saying a 6. I'm just going to add 6 to everything. If I get a 1, okay, I'm going to add 6 to that and I will get um, a 7 and so on and so forth. And it basically shifts this line over to here. Okay, and that's how this generally works. Okay, and so that's it for this video um, today. And if you have any questions, then please drop me a line or put a comment in the comment box. Um, if you do like the videos, then please give me a thumbs up, and if you like the channel, then please subscribe.